fixing the money thing. How important is prayer in your life? How important are making decisions? How important is it to do the right thing, make the right decision? You know, God's word gives us all the answers we need in life, the principles, but the details come from direction by the Holy Spirit, right? That's Gary? right. The, you can't turn to a page in the Bible and says, marry so-and-so or, right. you know, but uh, Buy this think, farm or, or work right. at this place. But I thank God that he has a way to speak to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I go back, of course, we were just friends, worked together at a company way back. We were both in college. 35 years ago. 35 <laughs> years ago. And, um, you know, I was 27. I'm, of course, marrying age, and I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> and we are just friends. And uh, just remember the day that we never dated. But one day the Lord spoke to me and said, that's your wife. And I said, praise God, that's a good word. <laughs> tell her, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell her. And uh, it was only two weeks later I asked you to marry me. That's right. We never did date. That's so. right. That's right. And when I said yes, you said, is that all? You don't need to think about it or pray about it. But the Lord had already given me that witness. But I'd also put something before God. I wanted you to meet my pastor. And I had told the Lord long before that, God, I don't trust my ability to make a decision like this. I want your confirmation through mm -hmm, my pastor. Mm -hmm. And I can remember to this day, the pastor, Pastor Vic, looking at you, looking at me, and he said something along the lines, I believe this is your husband, Dranda. And that's what I was looking for. So the Holy Spirit spoke to you, and he spoke to me kind of in a different spoke way. Spoke to your pastor. Through an authority, mm -hmm. through an authority that I had asked him to speak through. And so God will speak to us and give us direction. And then he did so with our finances and business and yeah. every decision Everything. we've had to make. But it's the vital. right decisions we made. We made yeah. a few we didn't see God Here's on. A, can I, say, I want to say this. <laughs> yes. it's, it's important that having that direction firmed up mm -hmm. gives you the staying power. Yes, it to, does. To develop the direction, God. So many people come and say, well, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do this and do that. And you know, in about a year or six months or even three months, they've quit. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord gives you direction, he's given you specific direction. You can anchor to that and you can hold to that in those tough times to get where God saw yes. you being before yes. you get there. It's so true because it's not that our marriage didn't have intense moments mm -hmm. of fellowship or difficulties or hardships mm -hmm. or that our businesses didn't or that ministry didn't. But when you've heard God's voice, like you said, the anchor right. is there and you continue to trust God for the outcome instead of what you see for the moment. That's right. Staying power. That's great. When we started our business, God gave us a dream in the night, gave me a dream in the night to start our company from scratch. And I didn't know anything about much of anything. It's in the financial field. And at that time, computers were, were pretty new especially the desktop type computers. They were pretty slow back then. Yes. And so at that time, launching into that business was kind of unnerving to someone that knew nothing about computers or wasn't really administrative. But because God spoke to me about that business, we persevered and learned what we had to learn. That's right. And that business is what got us out of debt. It's still yes. producing today hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's been yes. a great asset to our life, our ministry. But we had to do both. We had to hear the Lord and we had to persevere with that direction. In fact, a pastor I had many, many years ago in my early life as a Christian said these words, which really held me. He said, when God speaks to you, don't change direction until he speaks again. And there were days I begged him to. <laughs> I begged him, please change direction, but he didn't. And I'm glad he didn't because it held me in the direction Amen. where we're at today. Amen. And it's, it was very profitable. You know, we humbly say, we're not this good in the sense that what right. God has done in our life, there's no way where we started out, you and I, that we could have done the things that we've done. No, no God way. is better than you are, better than me. And so we don't take credit. We give him the glory for it. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to glorify himself in your life and my life by listening to his spirit, by letting his word be the principles that we live by and his spirit directing us through those situations in life. I always say in you know, Luke chapter five, when Peter, James and John were fishing all night and caught nothing, then Jesus borrows the boat and they go out the next day, of course, and catch so many fish, the nets about break and the two boats about sink. I always say, how hard would it be to catch fish if Jesus told you where the fish were? Yes. And that's it. Success is based on hearing God, following after him. And let's dive a little bit into how the principle works out of Romans, the eighth chapter. 
and we're going to look at verse number 22 today. Now, I'm going to read here. Paul is teaching. He says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth. Now, you, I, you know, I don't relate to that. You understand. But the bottom line is in childbirth, something that's never been birthed before in the earth realm is being birthed. So yes. there's and a there's, groaning there's in pressure. There's pressure. There's pressure. There's transition. Yes. There's change coming. That's right. And so it's very, very much... I can see the analogy. The analogy. So, mm -hmm. in the same way, it says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly. Now, in the same way childbirth, a woman has that pressure in childbirth, the Bible is using an analogy that out of our spirit is going to be birthed things that never existed before. This is important to your life to let the Holy Spirit bring direction that you never thought of as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. And dropping down to verse 26, it says, in the same way of groaning or birthing yes. pressure, okay. all right, the Spirit of God helps us in our weakness. Now, what is the weakness it's talking about? We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit of God Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express or birthing new things that we can't articulate ourselves because we don't know. That's the weakness. We don't know how to pray. Now remember the Bible says in 1 John 5, 14, 15, this is our confidence. If we ask anything according to the will of God, He hears us. And if we know He hears us, we have those things we've yes. asked of Him. So you're handicapped. If you don't know the will of God, it's impossible to have faith. Faith is in agreement with what heaven says. So that's the weakness Paul is talking about. I mean, the Bible does give principles, as you said, but it doesn't say to move to California, buy this house, sell the house, sell my stock, marry this girl, whatever. But I can't really pray along those lines without knowing the will of God, you see. So here we have the Bible telling us there's a solution for not knowing the will of God. And Paul says this is a weakness. But the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words we can't articulate. He's going to help us birth this thing, all right? And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. That means the thoughts of God's Spirit. Because the Spirit of God intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Now, the Holy Spirit's been poured out in the earth realm. So where is he, where is he interceding at? Through us. Through us. Yes. We're in the earth realm. He's in us. So he's going to intercede through us. And Paul calls that intercession praying in the Spirit or basically being prompted by the Holy Spirit. And here we see the Holy Spirit can pray through us His perfect will. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.